It's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com, where we instantly improve the lives of families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can make informed decisions, have peace of mind, real power, real control, and so that you can influence decision-making fast, even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered. And in last week's episode, I answered another question in this series of questions from my client, Melissa. And the question last week was part four of my 78-year-old mom has lung cancer and developed an infection. She's in intensive care on the breathing tube. Can she get off it or will she need a tracheostomy? You can check out last week's episode by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's episode of Your Questions Answered, I want to answer the next question in this series of questions from my client Melissa, which are excerpts from phone and email counseling and consulting sessions with me. And the question this week is part five of my 78 year old mom has lung cancer and developed an infection. She's in intensive care on the breathing tube. Can she get off it or will she need a tracheostomy? You can also check out previous questions answered from Melissa if you scroll down below this video and click on the links in the written version of this blog. And if you're watching this on YouTube, just click on the link below this video. That'll get you to our website where you can access all the other episodes and other information as well. So Melissa writes, Hi, Patrick. I want to thank you very much for your support and kindness. It has meant a lot to us as a family. We have a long road ahead of us. And while I'm overjoyed, she's at this moment breathing on her own. I have no illusions. My mom is still very sick and I know anything can happen. We're all trying to take it one day at a time. She now has a tracheostomy and she will be going to long term acute care in a couple of days. We're just glad she's got the tracheostomy now and she's ready to finally move on. Please keep us in your thoughts and if ever you are speaking to a family member in a similar situation who are told by doctors that there is little hope, remember us and tell our story. I would hate to think someone thinks seriously about pulling the plug when there is still hope. If there's one thing I am learning through all of this, it's that doctors don't don't know everything. I guess nobody really does. Thank you once again. And when and if we are in a difficult situation in the future or know someone who is, we will give you a call again. This is sincerely from Melissa. So if you are watching this and you want one on one counseling and consulting with me, click on the links on the top of the website where you have options about one on one phone and email counseling and consulting. And you can Click on the link and choose from the options that suit you best. So here is my response. Hi, Melissa. Thank you for your kind words. You mentioned, please keep us in your thoughts. And if ever you are speaking to a family in a similar situation who are told by doctors that there is little hope, remember us and tell our story. I would hate to think someone thinks seriously about pulling the plug when there is still hope. Well, I know you and your dad are relatively new to my blog, as well as as new to my one and one phone and email counseling and consulting. But if you are reading my newsletters and if you read or watch my your questions answered section, you will find that all of my advice, advocacy, counseling and consulting is all about not pulling the plug as long as there is hope. One of the reasons why I feel so strongly about this is that I have seen way too many situations whilst working full time in intensive care, where intensive care teams have been withdrawing treatment against families' wishes and without family consent, where I knew for a fact that the intensive care unit simply needed the bed for the next patient or they weren't making enough money. Families have literally either been, quote unquote, sold, coerced, or forced into agreeing to basically kill their loved ones because it suited the intensive care team's hidden agenda. In some cases, patients also didn't get full and standard treatment because they weren't of interest for the intensive care team because they couldn't do medical research or they couldn't attract enough funding for those cases. 
I was obviously very shocked when I first understood the finer details in intensive care and how life or death decisions were made. A breaking point for me was that I eventually refused to withdraw life support on critically ill patients when being asked for to as a bedside nurse. And I realized that nothing bad will happen. You just have to question things and you have to justify your point of view with solid facts. And you obviously have to stand your ground. I learned that I could be a patient and family advocate if I wanted to. And after nearly two decades working in intensive care, I know how to position diagnosis, prognosis, as well as care and treatment to get the best outcomes for critically ill patients and their families. And again, after nearly two decades working in intensive care in three different countries, where I also worked as a nurse unit manager in intensive care for over five years, I have learned enough I have seen everything that's happening behind the scenes in intensive care to start writing about it and make videos about it and to help families in intensive care one and one and get results quickly for them that are good for them. The reality is that 99% of the families in intensive care make no informed decisions. They have no peace of mind, no control, no power and no influence whatsoever. And they take everything the intensive care team says for face value without questioning and without doing their own research. I have seen way too many situations when I was still working full time in intensive care where families have been, quote unquote, sold on a withdrawal of treatment or they have been sold on a DNR, do not resuscitate or an NFR, not for resuscitation order as being quote unquote, in the best interest for their critically ill loved one. Families are often being told by intensive care teams that nothing else could be done and that their loved one would die, etc., without having been told that other treatment options might be available. Therefore, it's extremely important to question everything, especially when it comes to perceived versus real end of life situations. What do I mean by that? Well, there is, there is a big difference between real and perceived end of life situations. And I, have wrote, and I have written an entire article about this and made a video about it. And you can check it out below this video in the written version of this blog. Click on the link in the article and look for the difference between real and perceived end of life situations when your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Go and have a look. The fact of the matter is that if you don't question, nobody else will do it for you. If you don't do your own research, no one will do it for you. And the fact of the matter is that if you don't do it, you will be at the mercy of the intensive care team that's making their decisions based on the financial bad budget as well as on the bad management agenda of the intensive care unit. There are hundreds of answered questions, also known as real world case studies, tips, strategies, as well as interviews on my podcast that have all one recurring theme to never, ever give up and to always question. One of the reasons why I created this whole movement, as well as my business, IntensiveCareHotline.com, is that I, as a bedside nurse in intensive care, have felt compromised in my values, in my ethics and in my beliefs with everything that intensive care units and hospitals do because of their hidden agenda. I know all about it and I know that patient care is often compromised and it also costs lives because of early withdrawal of treatment or quote unquote pulling the plug because of reasons that are unknown to people who haven't worked in the environment and in the industry. Again, Melissa, you know where I am if you need help. I help people get real results when it comes to life or death decision making in intensive care. And I know how to successfully steer the system in this jungle of complexities. So how can you become the best advocate for your critically ill loved one? Make informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence quickly whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. You get to that all important feeling of making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence when you download 
your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you learn quickly how to make informed decisions, get peace of mind, real power and real control, and how you can influence decision making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free instant impact report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report, you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report, you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions. Discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. You get five mind-blowing tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to making informed decisions, get peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You'll get real-world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one's situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You'll get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what is really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care. And it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's Your Questions Answered episode and I'll see you again next week in another update. Make sure you also check out our blog section for more tips and strategies or simply send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Or you can call me, find international phone numbers on our contacts tab. Also, check out our ebook section where you get more ebooks, videos, and audio recordings, and where you can also get one on one counseling and consulting with me via Skype over the phone or via email by clicking on the tab on the top of the website. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com, and I'll see you again next week in another update.